finding the peace of God. So needless to say, this has been a year of challenges, hasn't it? Um, you know, since we heard, first heard the words COVID-19 or the coronavirus, it just seems like our, our lives have sort of been turned upside down. We have an extra layer of, of things to worry about or think about, things that we never really even considered before. Um, my son came by today and, and he said, you know, he said, I, I have this tickle in my throat. He said, and normally I would just think, oh, I, it might be allergies or I just have a tickle in my throat. But all of a sudden you're thinking, oh my gosh, is this the beginning of the coronavirus? So it, it, it seems that we have just this layer, additional layer of things to worry about in our lives. And, and then when you think about the onslaught of negativity that is out there right now with um, you know, the coronavirus, with the elections, with the riots and with the unrest that's all been happening uh, recently, it's truly overwhelming for us, isn't it? Um, it's like an icing on an ugly cake um, on top of it, our normal day-to-day -day concerns and worries that we have uh, about our families, about our children, about our jobs, about our marriages, about finances, about aging parents, whatever in our day-to-day -day life we've had to worry about, now we have a lot more on top of that. So tonight I have two questions for you. Um, let me see. If I can, oh. The, the first one is, what is it that blinds you to God's peace? And what is it that binds you to God's peace? So blinds or binds. So I want to start with the first one. What is it that blinds you to the peace of God? Or what is it that, that is keeping you from entering into his peace? Um, in John 14, 27, Jesus himself says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So is it possible that we have a different definition of peace from what Jesus is talking about in this passage? How, how do you define peace? So if you can get to the little chat screen, tell, just put, write one or two words in there that might be your definition of peace. I don't think I can see the chat screen. <laughs> Let's see. Anybody? Lucinda, can you see? I don't think I can see the chat screen. I can see it's stillness. Okay. Jesus's presence safety and security, stillness, inner calm, a deep sense of freedom, peace is like the knowing I don't have to worry, security. And I see serenity now. An inner calm. Oh, great. I love it. Excellent. Okay, good. all good words, all good words. So now let's think about this scripture. Let's think about Jesus says that he leaves us his peace. So when you think about his peace, what, is, what do you think that means? What do you think Jesus is talking about here when he says, peace I leave you, my peace I give you? So go to the chat box again and tell us what you think that means.
calm in the storm. You like that. Confidence that everything will be okay. Okay. What else? What does it mean when Jesus says he's going to give us his peace? Inviting us to the still point of creation, a deep connection to the Father, forgiveness and shalom, supernatural rest, yes. And Jesus' peace is Jesus himself. Yeah, I think he's just getting ready here to talk about Holy Spirit. And how he's leave going to be, he's going to be leaving, but Holy Spirit's going to be coming. So I think he wants us to get, to get, an, get the message that, you know, Holy Spirit is going to be bringing an awful lot of things. And one of those things is definitely going to be peace. So one more, Jesus' peace is Jesus himself trusting in the Father's reign. Yes, his peace is like no other. Warmth and comfort. Mm, yeah, I like that. They're all good. All good answers there about Jesus' peace. So think, just think for a second, does that differ? Does any of that differ from your definition of peace? And maybe we need to rethink what our definition of peace is as it comes from Jesus um, versus human peace. So the next thing that um, I kind of identified that, that keeps us or blinds us to that peace that Jesus has to offer is um, truth versus lies. So sometimes when we're facing trials in our lives, we, we let our minds wander to the worst case scenarios, don't we? You know, if somebody's um, on their way to our house or home from work and we can't get a hold of them and they're late, we haven't heard from them, we don't know where they are, we think of the worst possible scenario, don't we? We entertain our fears, we allow those fears, those thoughts, those fearful thoughts to enter in and we let them take over. We let them take control. We let them rule our minds. We let them rule our hearts. We often listen to the wrong voice, don't we? We, we listen to the enemy. We listen to other people. We listen to the media instead of going to the one who provides the truth. Now, I, I have some scripture verses up here about this, but I heard, I want to tell you uh, about a podcast I heard one time, and it was on, um, in the book of Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, where um, Eve is being presented with this beautiful, beautiful piece of fruit from the serpent. And Eve says, well, I, I can't, we can't eat that because God said, don't eat from this particular tree or we will die. And the serpent says, surely you will not die, right? So Eve has God's voice speaking to her in one ear and the voice of the enemy speaking to her in the other ear. So the question is, whose voice are you listening to? You know, often um, throughout my day, I'll get thoughts that just random thoughts. And, and sometimes I have to stop and think, okay, Whose voice is this? Sometimes it's like they'll remind me uh, of something I did in, in the past and something that, you know, is covered under the blood and, and I've been forgiven for. But I have to ask myself, okay, whose voice are you listening to right now? Is this the voice of God or is this the voice of the enemy? And these scriptures here talk about God's truth. The first one's from 2 Samuel says, for you are God, O sovereign Lord. Your words are truth, and you have promised these good things to your servant. From Psalm 25, lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. And then from Isaiah 11:5, 5, 
He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. I, I have to admit that this one made me giggle a little bit because when I think of undergarments, I think of what's the first thing you put on? You know, when you're getting dressed in the morning, I put on my undergarments. And so um, wearing an undergarment, wearing truth like an undergarment, you, when you think about that, you're like, okay, well, this is, this is one, this is going to protect me. <laughs> this is going to keep me covered and protect me all day long. So, <laughs> you know, one of the things about lies is lies steal our peace. Lies blind us to the peace of God. So we always want to be looking at things as, is this a truth? Is this God's truth or is this the lie of the enemy? All right, so the next one is some of us have control issues. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. However, I know <laughs> some of us on this Zoom meeting have some control issues. You know, the Bible talks a lot about self-control. It talks a lot about our need to control things like our temper, like our anger, like our tongue, and like our sinful desires. But I got to tell you, I looked really, really hard and I couldn't find one verse that tells us to control other people or to try to control our situations. There's not a verse in there about that. Actually, um, you know, we, we feel sometimes out of control. We, we don't feel peaceful because we're trying too hard to control something, to control the situation that we're in, to control um, the, the, the trials and the troubles. And Jesus says, wait a minute, you need to surrender all of this to the one who really is in control, to the one who controls it all. The Romans 8, 6 says, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life. And what's that other word? Peace. Letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. So what are other, some of the other things that might blind you to the peace of God? Just take that little piece of paper um, or chat it. And we're going to deal with some of those other things a little bit later. So things that might blind you to the peace that comes from God, the peace that comes from Holy Spirit and being in his presence. Think about that for just a second before we move on. Things that blind you. All right, so now let's talk about how we bind ourselves to the peace of God. Not blind ourselves, now we're gonna bind ourselves to the peace of God. The first one is meditating on scripture. You know, when Jesus was um, in, the, in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, he fought off the enemy with scripture. So um, here's a few uh, that we can meditate on, but the, if you do a search, for scriptures that have the word peace in them, there are hundreds. So if you're ever feeling like you can't find peace, just do that search and then go through and, and meditate on those scriptures and pray on those scriptures. But here's a few, John 16, 33 says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I, Jesus, have overcome the world. And then Galatians 5, and 23, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And then in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. 
Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Isn't that interesting? God's peace exceeds anything or passes all understanding is maybe the way you've heard it in the past. A peace that passes our understanding can only come from God. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you, as you live in Christ Jesus. So those are some scriptures. I know Lucinda's talked about this a lot lately, about memorizing scripture. Well, in, in these turbulent times, it's a good idea to memorize some scriptures about peace, for sure. So the next thing that I came up with was abiding in Christ. So John 15, 4 says, to remain or abide in me, and I will remain or abide in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. And what's one of the fruit that we just talked about in Galatians? Peace. So abiding in Christ or remaining in Christ and having him remain in you brings that peace to us. One of those, um, one of the fruit that he talks about in John. And the next one is constant communion with Holy Spirit. You know, I, I love um, the, the verse in Thessalonians that Paul says, pray without ceasing, meaning be in constant communication with Jesus, with Holy Spirit. So I, I put up here a couple of different versions of this verse. The NIV says, pray continually. Um, another version is pray without ceasing. Another one is never stop praying. And then the Passion Translation says, make your life a prayer. Make your life a prayer. Turn everything over to him. That's from Philippians 4, 6. Pray, it says pray about everything. So if we're praying about everything and we're praying continually, we never stop praying and our life is a prayer, we ought to be having that peace of Christ that passes our understanding fill us. We need to practice being in his presence because peace comes when we are present with him. And then, and then finally, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about our refuge, about God being our refuge, the Lord being our refuge. Um, Psalm 18.2 says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 34, 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And then Psalm 91, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And then finally, one of my favorites is Deuteronomy 33, 27. It says, the eternal God is your refuge and his everlasting arms are under you. Just imagine that for a minute. His everlasting arms are under you. It reminded me of the song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. So I looked up the words to, to the song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And, and here's the, the verses, the first and the third verse, and then the, the chorus there. The first verse says, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. And then verse three says, what have I to dread? What have I to fear, leaning on the everlasting arms? I have blessed peace with my Lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms. We are safe and secure from all alarms when we're leaning on the everlasting arms. Just some of those 